majority of injuries that um, are really sustained within the military population are pretty similar to other sports, um, to be honest with you. And um, it's low back, shoulder, and knee. That's the most common orthopedic conditions that people come in for. Um, the loads are a little bit different. So, you know, what possibly would have um, maybe sprained somebody's ankle playing soccer, if you have some extra load on you, that sprain turns into either a little bit more significant sprain or a fracture or something like that. So um, the, the regions are really the same, but maybe the complexities of those injuries um, um, are a little bit different. And then you have um, also that mentality of kind of being a little bit tougher than the average, uh, the average individual and maybe um, dealing with injuries because you don't want to go man down on your team, um, you don't want to be pulled out of any formation, um, you want to get promoted, those types of things. So you may be dealing with things a little bit longer than possibly somebody who says, hey, I, I got to take a seat or something like that. Prevention is a pretty um, hot topic um, that's out there and I think everybody's looking for, you know, how do I prevent an injury from happening? Um, the biggest thing is to have a plan. Um, so there's a point in time when you can be reactive to something where you don't really have a plan, where um, something happens to you and you say, okay, what do I do now? Um, versus having a, um, a proactive approach saying, well, what can I do to better myself to reduce my risk of having an injury? Or at the very least, what do I do if I have an injury? Who do I go see? Can I modify activities? What do I do now? There are little things that I can do to, to deal with the injury to kind of um, put me on the right foot forward. Um, so I think that's, that's the kind of thing that um, individuals would be, um, would be more uh, responsive to that injury if they uh, kind of had a plan, plan set in place. Um, one of the areas that um, we can kind of look at is just how somebody moves. And if you look at um, movement as being one of those areas that is a risk of having an injury. So you look at a proactive approach, improving your mobility, whether it be your shoulder joints, your low back, your knees, your ankles, are one of those areas that you can look at as well as being a, a, um, a risk factor for having an injury. So we look at dorsiflexion, that's just basically how you can bring your toes up towards your shin, um, how far you can kind of move that. Um, there's a way to assess that for yourself. Um, so we'll, we'll demonstrate that and then there's also some ways that you can kind of tackle that as well um, with some individual specific um, exercises um, but also knowing that a good well-rounded holistic program probably will get you um, some of these movements in there um, but sometimes you just need a little more a little more help um, with uh, kind of improving that that range of motion So we talked about a way to assess your dorsiflexion or how far your toe can come up towards your shin. So this is just an easy way for you to do it yourself. You can find a, obviously a flat surface to um, move your knee towards, so a wall or in this case we have a pile box. And what um, is going to happen here is you're going to try to move your toe away from the wall or the box that we have here and bend your knee forward while keeping your heel on the ground and your torso relatively straight. And you're going to go as far back from the structure that you're um, touching until you can't reach your heel off the ground. And as soon as you reach your heel off the ground, that's where your end point is. And you can measure the distance from the box, in this case, to your toe. And then you would do the other side and see where you are. What we know from uh, most of the literature is that you, know, you want to be symmetrical from side to side. That's one of the risk factors for injury is actually asymmetry between movements. Um, but some of the um, numbers that come out are about 10 centimeters from whatever structure you're measuring from. So in this case, a um, little bit stiffer on the right side. So, um, so how we can address that specifically is we can do the exact same motion. So go ahead and get in the exact same position, but just focus it a little bit more, having your hands on your knee. And he's gonna do a couple little bounces forward. And where you may feel that is kind of the front crease of your ankle around your Achilles tendon. We're working on mobilizing that joint, moving it a little bit further um, through that range of motion. To make it a little bit more difficult, you can add a band in. Um, so you can put that band around your ankle and you want to have that band just on the top crease of your ankle um, where, where basically that um, joint line is, kind of like where your laces would be if you're, if you're wearing shoes. And you're doing the exact same motion but this band is having you do a little bit more resistance against it. And then make it finally a little bit more difficult, you can add a box 
to add a little bit more um, ankle range of motion to the pitcher, but it's the exact same motion. So you just want to perform uh, 20 to 30 reps um, for two or three sets, and that's it. So you really have a way to assess how far your ankle range of motion is going, and then a couple exercises um, that are pretty similar to address it. Um, and this would be very simply to add into your exercise warm up even between sets of exercises to kind of um, get it into your program without taking away too much time.